Welcome to another episode of How Then Shall We Live? My name is Myron Milkey, and I am again joined by our senior pastor, Matt Dumas. Good morning. Welcome. Um, last time our topic was the Bible, mm -hmm. and we talked about the importance of spending time reading yes. and how to understand what we're reading. Now, as part of our intro each time, right. we're, we explain that why we're doing this. Right, right. We've been we've been working out together for seven years. Our anniversary was last month. I think we said it was going to be on Valentine's Day. Yeah, so. and you <laughs> forgot to give me flowers. Just let you Shame know. Shame on me. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, we talk about a variety of things at the gym as we work out, and we talk about oh, politics, social mm -hmm. issues, health, movies, sports, the Bible, comic books, what books we're reading, things in the news, right, etc. So we take some of those topics mm -hmm. and we bring them into this forum. We do. And we rehash them and let mm -hmm. the people of Central just listen in a little bit. Right, right. So in deciding what our topic of discussion is today, we have we have a variety of things to mm -hmm. talk about. But I think we're going to put them under one canopy. Okay. And that's going to be discipleship. Sounds good. During COVID. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So we might be jumping around a bit. Uh, with discipleship as a church, okay. um, as as parents, grandparents, and we'll talk more about churches and COVID restrictions. Okay. Okay, that sound good? Uh, are we going to... Sounds challenging. Okay, okay. are we going to figure out how then shall we live? We will figure it out. Okay, and we're going to go pretty deep on this one again. Oof, all so right. So put your boots on. That's right. But first, mm -hmm. let's ease into this and start with something on the lighter side. Can we do that first? Okay. All right. Everyone knows you like the Marvel movies. You do. And you you use them in your message illustrations frequently. So anyone doesn't know he likes Marvel movies, he really likes Marvel movies. I do. So, first question is, mm -hmm. what do you think of the new WandaVision show on Disney Plus? This is gonna warm us up. This is gonna warm us uh -huh. up. Um, I think it's an intriguing. Mm -hmm. It's an intriguing way of telling the story. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I would say that make it through the first episode or two so you can kind of get into the story a little bit. At first, it doesn't seem to make sense, but as you go along, you start to see a little bit more, and it's kind of getting weird. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's entertaining. So it's entertaining. I'd I say it's entertaining. I asked you to kind of give me your recommendation on it because right. I was a little. Standoffish right. of it at first, right? Um, but you were able to say, "Yeah, why don't you go give it a watch?" And I said, "Well, is Rosemary going to like to watch it with me because she right. hasn't seen all the Marvel movies?" And he said, "Oh, you know, give it a shot, see what she thinks." And she enjoys it too. The first couple episodes are sort of like watching a nineteen fifties or sixties sitcom, right? It's strange, but we we got kind of hooked on it, and right. it's 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 a lot of fun now. So there's one one episode one left comes so. out tomorrow, so. Right. We're gonna we're gonna finish that off and see what the the finale mm -hmm. is. <clears throat> okay, are we are are we warmed up a bit now? I think so. Okay, so let's talk about the latest COVID restrictions. That'll be a nice. Segue. Okay. 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 Um, things change really fast. Right. Now, as of today, the day we're recording, we found out just a couple days ago that Texas, your mm -hmm. home state, opened up 100 percent. Right. Dropped the mask mandates. Right. Now, the state of California really doesn't want people gathering in groups inside, mm -hmm. period. And a couple Supreme Court cases had rulings, and one helped us to get inside. Right. So we're meeting Sunday mornings at 9 right. inside. And then there was another Supreme Court ruling that pretty much allowed the state to impose greater restrictions. Yes. And for instance, the worship team now has to wear masks. So... What do you say to that? What's what's going on? Um, so we had a talk, conversation about that this week, actually, with the staff. And uh, I know for some folks, when they just see me on a Sunday and they just see me uh, during the week, they, it can seem like, oh, that, that those things have no impact on me, uh, that um, no thoughts really given or anything like that. Uh, I, on a personal level, I always struggle when new things come out like that because I'm, I'm like everyone else. I, I begin to qu ask the question, why? why? Why do we have to wear a mask? And especially when you see uh, another state that's not wearing masks and, and they've got, they can go eat at a restaurant, they can go watch a movie, they can go do those things. Then it's easy to go with the why's. But 
anytime I do that, I have to then dial myself back in and I have to say, okay, so um, what is what does the Bible have to say about it? You know, what is the what does God's word have to say? And it takes me back to Romans 13, where we were um, a couple weeks ago in our sermon series in Romans. And, and uh, Paul there writes that every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. And sometimes that's hard. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's hard. Now, if, if let's take California, for example, if they were asking us or if they were telling us we couldn't worship at all, if they were saying churches are shut down, there's no worship, we're, we're canceling church altogether, we'd be having a different conversation. But they haven't said that. They have simply just said, okay, if you're going to worship, if you're going to offer it, here's, here's some guidelines for doing that. Here's some protocols that you need to follow to do that. So they haven't, they haven't banned worship. They've just said it's going to be more restrictive. Well, I don't like the restrictions. Personally, I don't like them. But as one who follows Jesus, I have to look at what God's Word says, and it says I'm to be in subjection to the governor. And that means that if he doesn't ask me to do anything that violates what God's word has said, then I'm to obey it. Um, I would kind of equate it to, I don't know, if you're, you you have an employer, I guess, you you work for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may not agree with, with their directions or what they, what they say, right? But at the end of the day, you got to obey. Right. If they say your job is to do this, then then you even if you don't understand it or if you question or even if you don't even think it's that that brilliant, you either obey or you're going to end up lo- losing your job, right, or leaving mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, kids are probably the most in this category because they have teachers and they have coaches and they have parents and and so all of those are authorities over them and they may not understand why their parents restrict certain things or they may not understand why the teacher asked them to do certain homework assignments and they may not even think they help them at all or they're any good but yet they're still called to be in subjection to those authorities and so we as a church because the government has been placed as an authority over us the bible says that that when we we do that because god's the one who put them there and so when I am subjecting to an authority, when I'm obeying that authority, and subjection and obedience are not always the same thing. Again, the example is if the government asks me to do something that violates the word of God, then I have to choose to disobey the government and, and obey God. But, and that's a big but, I have to be willing to face the consequences. And I, and I always am still in subjection. So there, that means I still show respect. I still say, uh, no, thank you. I can't do that. I use the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, there, in the whole fiery furnace thing, there's Nebuchadnezzar set up a big golden statue, right? And he said, everybody has to bow down to it. And uh, these three guys refused to do it. And so they got brought before the king. The king says, you got one more chance. We're going to play some music. You need to bow down. And their response was, O king, our God can deliver us from your hand. He will deliver us from your hand, but even if he doesn't, we still can't bow down. They were super respectful the whole time, but they were also super firm that they had to obey God rather than men. And so if we're in that position, we, we still, we're still respectful, but we choose to do that. The situation we're in right now isn't that situation. And so with the mass mandate, um, one of the things the worship team has to wear them, the, the pastor doesn't. But my personal feeling is, if you've ever been on a team, you've probably been on some kind of sports team. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Maybe mm-hmm. one. Maybe one or two. Yeah. Um, you've been in a work in environment where you're a team working together on something. Your family's a little team, right? Uh, uh, we talk about the church as a family, and, and, and maybe you're in a small group, so it's kind of a team. But um, for the team, for the good of the team, I really think it's it's important that the leader leads the way. And so um, if the rest of the team has to wear a mask and the leader says, well, I don't have to, so I'm not going to, then I think it sets a bad precedent for the rest of the team. I think it it doesn't show this oneness or this that we're in this together. 
And so I choose to wear a mask um, as long as those protocols are out because I want to support our team and I want us to be one. And, and, and to show the congregation we're in this together. And a mask can't keep us from worshiping Jesus. And so I think I've answered your question. I think you've answered the question. Quite a yes. far afield. So. And, and the difference was the, the singers project more aerosols, mm -hmm. more droplets than someone speaking. So they were going to give the speakers uh, a, a break. break. Yeah. Right. So, but you decided to join the team and, mm -hmm. and go ahead with and wear the mask. So, so there's over this topic and so many other things. There's so much division in our country right now. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the disappointments right now for me is just seeing churches pointing fingers at other churches. Mm -hmm. Like what's happening is somehow their fault or our fault, or we're right. not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So we're in Romans right now. 13, right. 14, and 15, and I don't think there's a more perfect place for mm -hmm. us to be to understand what's going on and right. figure out how we're supposed to, how then shall we live? How do we, how do we deal with this? Right. right. We're right there right now. Um, but I'm just going to say it. It's, I think it's hurtful, and I think it's unnecessary to hear other pastors and folks online. I mean, I've seen various websites and YouTube videos and the comments and they're, they're labeling some pastors as bold, some as weak, some congregations as fearful, um, lazy, some are strong. I, it just seems those statements are based on the interpretation of the maybe the Constitution mm. along with Scripture. I, I think I said it at the gym the other day. I feel like some people um, take the Scripture and strain it through the Constitution mm. and then come up with, right. the, with the, a way of handling it. But it's, I've seen it in various publications, and I know other people have seen other pastors on, on websites and, and right. YouTube and things like that. Got, any say, you got anything to say on that? <laughs> um, so, and I've said this a couple of different times as we've gone through 14 and 15. Um, Paul says in, at the end of 14, he says that, that the conviction that you have, you're to have as your own before God. Um, and so each of these churches, each pastor, each elder team, that's, that's however their church is organized, um, our job as shepherds is to, is to really follow the chief shepherd and know what his voice says, know what he's, what he's telling us to do. And the only way we can do that, well, one's through prayer, but the other is through, through his word. And so it's, it's our job in these kind of times is to, to read God's word and, and as best we can to, to kind of filter out all of our own biases and just read God's word. And then biblically come to a conclusion. What is it saying? Prayerfully consider that conclusion. Make sure we're not missing anything. And then reason through it and say, okay, what does this look like? I think many times what happens is we either already have jumped to the conclusion of what, what we want to do, and then we start looking for Scripture to back up that, that mm -hmm. position. So right. I want to be open. I want to meet. I want to do it the way we want to do it. And so let's find the verses that may allow us to do that. And unfortunately, I think that's sometimes the problem. Uh, another problem, we talked about this in our Americanism versus Christianity kind of conversation is that um, growing up in America, we are told that we have certain rights and we have certain freedoms and privileges and, and, and all of these things that are very American, but they're not very Christian. And so if, if I'm looking at it, like you said, filtering everything through the Constitution first and saying, what are my uh, First Amendment rights? And, and, and that's, that's the thing I'm looking at first instead of God's Word first then I come to a conclusion that, okay, well, if I think that this is violating a First Amendment right, then that supersedes whatever the Bible is telling me to do as far as subjecting myself to the authorities. Uh, in this case, the interesting thing is that that second Supreme Court ru ruling that you, you mm -hmm. gave, the Supreme Court said that it is constitutional what the governor's doing. And so if your argument is based on the Constitution or the Bible, both of them would support that you should be in subjection to the governing authorities. And so in this case, there it, it seems like there's now, and, and this is the way I'd say it, I think what's being exposed is what we're really trusting in and, and where we're finding our um, 
what what is our ultimate measure of truth? What's our ultimate standard of truth? Um, and I think that's what we're starting to find during this time. And unfortunately, uh, you know, Romans 14, it's the, you know, you have the stronger brother and the weaker brother, and you have all those things, and you could you could use that argument. But even there, Paul says that we sometimes give up our rights for the sake of the weaker brother. Sometimes that that we put up with their convictions or we put up with their opinions because um, it's gonna. We don't want to cause them to stumble, but we're always looking to build each other up. And so, if if you're a part of a group that's putting other folks down, you know, and I talked about this on on Tuesday in one of our meetings, mm-hmm. I said, you know, what would you call that on the playground, uh, or what would you call that if you're online doing it? And and the answer was bullying. And so, what you see, it, it's very strange that churches would try to bully other churches or try to shame other churches and say. Well, we're doing it right and you're doing it wrong. Um, the truth is that both of those churches and the leadership of those churches will one day have to give an accounting before God. I don't have to give an account for what other churches are doing. I have to give an account for what we've done here at Central. And so I take that very seriously. And that's why for me, uh, I'm going to stick as close as I can to what the Bible's saying because I don't want to be out here kind of floating around mm-hmm. doing my own thing. And so I do it, and I do, and I've said this before. <clears throat> we have, actually, I think I said it in the last video, but we have a thing in Christian circles. It's just as much uh, a truth as relative thing as the rest of the, as the secular world, and that is your interpretation. Right. It's, that's just how your I interpret it, how you right. interpret it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's again that 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 in many ways undermines and belittles the Word of God because it makes it uh, a, a foggy, fuzzy. I can't really understand it so everybody can can kind of come to a different conclusion on what's truth. When God intends for us to to understand who he is and what he wants us to do. So uh, in this time I, I you know I for me I, I just for those those pastors that feel like um this is an opportunity to show how courageous or whatever I am I would say this is a time to lead your flock. This is a time to love on your people. This is a time to come alongside them and point them to Jesus. And it's not a time to grandstand. It's not a time to say, wow, look how, how great I am or anything. This is a time to, to truly say, okay, and, and, and I think it's, gonna, it's a wake-up call for the American church. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of things that shake loose from it because of, of who we are and, and how we've allowed... Uh, the culture and and politics and everything else to get all kind of sucked up in part of the church. So, well, now I know a few mm-hmm. years ago before you came, mm-hmm. we were in search of a new senior pastor, mm-hmm. and I know the the prayer for all of us was we wanted to be unified. We mm-hmm. wanted unity for Central, and we had so many people praying for unity for unity. And I think right now we we have a sense of unity. Mm-hmm. I mean, just in our the, the Tuesday meeting that you were talking about, I mean, we had staff and pastors in there, and I know you talked about the elders, and they're, they're, we're all unified mm-hmm. in where we're going. We're looking at Romans 13. We're looking at the restrictions. Um, not, all of us, not all of us or any of us like them, really. Right. But we're saying, okay, this is probably the best thing to do right now because we're, we're trying to follow what we can. Right. And I just, I appreciate you and the mm-hmm. elders being unified, mm-hmm. and also our staff, um, and seeing it it helps us to be able to do our jobs. Mm-hmm. It helps us to be able to continue ministry, mm-hmm. and we don't have those those little things that can be just needling at all of us right, right. now. I mean, it's hard. I mean, we're, right. we're all going through a difficult time, right. everybody, everybody in the world, right. but this makes it much easier mm-hmm. understanding, and how do we get there? We're looking at Romans 13, Right, and we're all seeing the same thing. Right, we're we're not trying to be divisive, or we're not mm-hmm. trying to come up with our own little way. How can we get around this? So right. this is what it says. So we're going to do it. Right, and so I, I do appreciate that with mm-hmm. with the leadership here You're at Central. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to come back next week, and be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. Mm-hmm.